Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I will try to bring some policy view on the discussion as well. And I will say that probably culture is one of the less understood areas that we have in general. We take it for granted. We take it as a fixed effect. And that's why, why I think it's so important that we are discussing this in this seminar today. And if you think, <clears throat> and you look at one of the biggest puzzles we have in new in the modern area is why, given that we have such an, uh, uh, a huge amount of information and the technology, you can translate that technology from different countries, why is that we have two countries uh, that actually have such a big difference among them? Uh, here you have Switzerland, and then you have uh, the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and this is such a big puzzle. Why, if we are so close, we have all the information, why is it that we cannot manage to get it right. Um, and if you look at it, it's not only these two countries, but the, the variation in, in, in the world is huge. So it's like living in different ages, um, but in the same time. So there's a big debate, it was a big debate, about what are the deep determinants of uh, economic prosperity. And they basically used to be the case that we had these three main theses. One was geography, uh, the other was, was trade, and the other one was institutions, right? Nowadays, after many years, we all agree that probably even though the three of them are important, institutions is quite important, right? Um, the problem is that um, uh, even if we know that, even if we agree that institutions may be behind this difference on economic development, um, the truth is that it doesn't tell us much. Because it's like saying to you, well, you need Messi or Arturo Vidal to win a World Cup. Yeah, but how can we create that, right? You don't get that far if you only say we need good institutions if you don't know how to create them. So um, the biggest question that we have, because and we, as economists, we are not that good to create theories without data. So the data restrict us and put us just as a describers of the world. We're not that good at getting that far all the time. But um, so what are the deep determinants of institutions is an area where probably culture has a lot to say, right? Um, and there's another uh, deep, uh, good book that probably you all read already that actually uh, goes deeper and said not every institution and actually give us some insight about what type of institutions work better. And basically this book basically tells, and this research so shows you that inclusive institutions actually do a better job. And then, when you start saying, okay, insti inclusive institutions, you get closer and closer to culture. So, uh, as you, the both uh, previous uh, presenters were saying, uh, culture it seems to be a really good area to get deeper on the formation of good institutions, because basically, culture obviously affects personal values and attitudes, uh, and they also affects collective values and attitudes. So if you want to get better institutions, you better understand uh, uh, how to change, how to evolve culture. So first of all, you may be tempted to think, oh, these poor countries, these developing countries, they're just stuck there. They cannot move. They're not as smart as developed countries. So you must be very careful um, and, 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 and not to get tempted that actually um, the uh, culture is something fixed. Obviously, history uh, has a lot to say. But the good news is that for me, probably understanding the way we can uh, change culture uh, in a positive way is a huge opportunity to fix the problem we saw in the first slide, right? So that's why, I, again, uh, I'm very grateful that we have a seminar talking about this because we don't see many seminars talking about this thing. So first thing I want to fix on your heads is that culture is not uh, at all fixed. It is a little bit sticky, but if we understand it better, we can really uh, make huge progress. And by the way, technology plays a huge role on changing culture. Fire was probably one of the best inventions that allow us to move from a point of view where actually we were hunting and living only just for the next day to a situation where actually the society and the division of labor actually started to play a huge role and also changed our brain. 
change the way we evolve. So fire was this technological change many, many years ago was a huge player. Then we have trade, the industrial revolution, so technology uh, always actually uh, was a big factor of changing culture. Then we created the modern state, the idea that actually religion was not the best way to run our countries, but on the other side, we have this uh, option of having modern states where you can allow cultures to vary, you can allow freedom to flow over citizens, and I think that's another very smart innovation. But then we have these episodes in our history as well. So something that we, sh we should always be very careful is that we are always in the risk of getting into the trap of bad cultures. So as, as we were discussing, moving culture into the right situation is a good opportunity, but we must be careful that we as a human species, we have been uh, in, 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 in times where actually we're moving culture in the wrong uh, direction. So and, and nowadays, I think, even though we're far from these two guys, um, fortunately, um, uh, we still we, we are starting to see some guys that I am kind of worried about. Um, I will go there later. So we were smart enough to actually get rid of that um, period of the Cold War, um, and technology actually started to play a huge role. And as we were seeing, networking is a very important. Networks are very important to to make uh, culture uh, to evolve. Um, and now we have these cell phones. I would say that probably cell phones are playing such an amazing, and, and we don't know how it's going to go in the future, but actually uh, cell phones probably are really changing the way we uh, interact to each other, and it should be something that we should take care, more care of. It. So the temptation it will be that right now we should just relax. No cold war. We're OK. Kind of, uh, the democracy is working in many places, not all places, but sh we should relax. But then the truth is that I am worried. I am worried because the, I'm a liberal. Um, I like democracy. I like modern states. But the truth is that in all over the world, we're seeing nationalism. We're seeing some um, stories that actually are kind of uh, different from what I think is the best for the world and for the prosperity of the world. And the truth is that actually, I do believe that this uh, economist uh, portrait is, is very true in, the, in, the, in meaning that we, those who believe in freedom, we relax too much. We stop uh, dreaming about the change, about justice. So we relax so much because we were from the elite that actually we, don't need, we didn't need that change. We didn't need that change. So uh, we really need to think harder that we cannot get rid of politics. If you tr truly believe in your beliefs, you should really take care of your society. You should really take care of politics. And that means it's not just really relax and let the time pass over. Um, but right now, we are in a moment where actually democracies are uh, being questioned. And if you look at the service, I don't have the service here, but if you look at the service, many people start, start saying, I don't need democracy. Who cares? Um, so so um, and we start seeing these guys winning elections um, all over the place, in different countries, different colors, different views. And so populism is something that is over there, always. And you know where it starts, you don't know where it ends. And the trick the populists use all the time is the same. We divide society among the goods and the bad guys. I am the saver. You vote for me. Once I am in power, I stay in power. I don't need you anymore. I change the rules. It's very simple. So now, since we, the liberals, thought that actually, let's open the doors and let's have migration. Migration is great. But obviously, we were not sophisticated enough to have a good migration. Good migration doesn't mean that we'll be cherry picking. Good migration means that actually the social interaction is very important, it's very sophisticated, it's complicated. So if you really believe that diversity is a good thing, because I do believe that, I do believe that we don't need that homogeneous society to grow and to prosper, but then you must be very careful to run good immigration policies. And not only saying, yeah, let's open the doors, do whatever you want. But you must be more sophisticated than that. So I don't want that. Um, I do believe that diversity is a good thing. Um, and I come from Chile. 
I come from this society where we also had a very divided history. We had Pinochet, we have Allende, we were killing each other. And the way we get rid of that is with new leadership, new guys that were able to stand and say, we're going to move forward. We're not going to repeat what we had already. And I want to show you this picture. Few countries in the world can show five presidents alive standing together saying, guys, no matter how we think, because we have different views here, we really need to build good institutions. Institutions where we can actually bring our best people to work in the public sector, to work into politics, to be serious about data, to use evidence. And that's what I think uh, culture is not something that you should take for granted. And culture is something you should really work. And politics and civil society and economic uh, progress is also uh, an ecosystem that work together. Um, so it's not only in Chile. Everywhere in the world, we have seen leaders that actually did what we expect to do everywhere. So not, it's not easy just to relax. It's not good just to relax. It's not good just to say that culture is a fixed effect in a regression. Culture is a vivid, it's something that is evolving. Technology affects it. And our principles, our values affect it. And I'm sure the new generation needs to get a deeper understanding about how to manage this culture element. So I, will, I want to show you this picture. This is Ulysses. Uh, narrative, and why I wanted to show that, because we are always be tempted with populism and with messianic leaders around the world. One of the good things I like about Switzerland is that you have been able to manage in a way that everybody participates in the government. It's very different from what I see in my country, Latin America, what you see in Africa, what you see in many places. Here you have been able to understand actually the diversities of view in politics is also very relevant. You should really uh, worry about it. Because in this uh, story, basically, Ulysses was asked, he asked uh, the, the crew to tie his hands to the mastel uh, in order to not get the, the music from the sirens, uh, to not to get trapped by the music of the sirens, and in order to really make it to their place. Um, and he asked the crew to, to, tap, uh, to cover their ears in order for them not to fall into the ocean as well. So. Um, I want to finish just giving you um, one example of a short video that we performed last year when I was running for president in Chile. Chile is one of the most conservative countries in the world. Uh, we are really lagging behind in gender equality. Um, nobody cares about it that much. Uh, now we're trying to push that agenda. And I just want to show this. llegas a tu casa después del trabajo y todos te están esperando para que empieces a cocinar? ¿Sabes qué se siente cuando tu sueldo es menos que el de los hombres que hacen el mismo trabajo que tú? ¿Sabes qué se siente cuando vas caminando por la calle y te hacen sentir como si estuvieras desnuda? No, no lo sé. No soy mujer. Pero esta realidad me indigna. Soy Felipe Cast y la equidad de género es mi compromiso. So, just wanted to finish with this uh, short video. Not just, this was worldwide turned the topic at that day, it was crazy. We didn't expect that to be such a conflict in Chile. We were expecting that it's going to be a clear message that we really respect and we want to fight, we respect women and we want to fight against discrimination. Um, but I wanted to show you this video because even for our, uh, when we were running for the campaigning with that, it was a huge problem in Chile. The conservatives were really kind of feeling uh, that we were uh, really trying to uh, break the rules and trying to move the frontier. Um, so again, this is just an example of how difficult it is to change culture, but how important it is to do it in order to have a better world and to have a prosper uh, world and with, with less inequality. Because if you see, there's nothing less efficient than discrimination. There's nothing less uh, kind of pro-market, pro-economy, pro-prosperity than really trying to get a country or a world where you can use merit, meritocratic system, and not really racial or whatever other system. One of the biggest problems we have in Chile is that the place where you're born influences a lot the opportunities of our children. 
So we really need, we really need to think hard about what is a just society, a fair society. If you want to be successful with our ideas of freedom, what it means to have a just society, a fair society, from a, from a liberal point of view. And I think if we have equality among children, if we have no discrimination among women, no discrimination among racial, then you may say that the inequality that we see is not a big problem because it's not coming from discrimination. It's not coming from the fact that actually our children have different opportunities. It is coming from the talent that we observe and the diversity we have in our society. Thank you.